Okay, so now I'm trying not to panic. I'm trying not to, you know, I, I use the bathroom seal. But in the excitement of the moment, that ain't even an issue anymore. So all kind of doctors and I can hear, you know, some people saw showing up to my room. You know, he come to crash card. He come to, you know, nurses. I can hear doors and stuff being boom. You know, just like Ben Casey. If y'all don't know who Ben Casey is, back then I'm older. You know, where to go, your girl. I just turned 64 this summer. Ben Casey was a doctor show back in the day in the 60s. And, and he used to bust through those emergency room doors. Anywho, look it up. But... I can hear all this commotion. This is a big deal, you know. This ain't, they not making light of this. They not trying to, you know how normally doctors and nurses, they'll try to, wish they should, to keep you calm. Shout out to all the doctors and nurses out there. Y'all are awesome. They should keep you calm. You know, they, they job is to get control of the situation, whatever. But I can hear all this commotion going on, and I know this is a big deal. And on top of that, I can hear the page, the, you know, that cold blue, that. I can hear that going on, but it's my name. It's, you know, first they hit it with cold blue room, blah, blah, blah. That's my room. Cold blue room, blah, blah, blah. And then they say my name, cold blue, blah, 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 da, da, da. Room number, blah, cold, blue, blah, blah, blah. Then it's my name. And I'm like, hey, wait, ho, or, er, you know. Whew. So I try to get out the bed. I'm just going to tell you. Put, put it right there. I'm just going to tell you. So at this point, I'm not fighting. I'm just trying to get out the bed to see what it really is. You know what I'm saying? To see, can I stand up? To see, can I walk? To see, can I, you know, because like I said, I know them first few moments and hours, is, that's critical. And we don't have time to try to figure it out. You can see I can't move this side. Something done happen. Give me some aspirin. Give me some, you know, give me some medicine. Let's, let's get on it. So I'm trying to get out the bed. Mind you, I still have this whole arm. It's just like I have an IV right here. I have an IV, you know, an IV right here in the radial area. I have an IV right here in the anti-cubital area. You know what I'm saying? So I got IVs. And this IV that's right here, it's got ports and shunts coming off of it. So, like I said, it's about three, four bags of stuff up here. Big bags, little bags, mini bags. That's, that's been going at me while I sleep, you know. I think one was potassium or something. One was medicine for pain. One was uh, blood thinner or something. You know, just all this stuff. This is what I learned afterwards. Right now, I don't care about what's up there. All I care about is why we ain't functioning like your girl L functions, right? So, I'm getting out the bed. It don't matter. I'm getting out this bed. So, now it looks like I'm combative. And they started to call security. Hospitals, I'm tell you something. Patients don't mean to be like that. Patients just, they're scared. They're, 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 you know, it's the unknown. They trying to figure it out just as much as you are. Because it's them. It's just a job to you to figure it out. But to them, it's their way of life. So they trying to figure, really figure it out. You know, so be patient with patients who try to get up against your will. Patients who try to do things. And I know you're just trying to keep us safe. But sometimes people just got to see for themselves what they can do. People just have to know for themselves. And plus, people know who they are inside. And they know the fight that they have. And a lot of times, it's don't do this, don't do that. Stop doing this, quit doing that. And I can just go a lot faster than what y'all taking me. Or, But I had to learn that they're the doctors. And if they say slow down, slow down. If they say don't, don't. If they say don't do it no more, quit. If they say 
You shouldn't use your leg right now. Don't. Okay? If this is how you coming back too fast. And you just tell God what they said and keep on pushing. <laughs> but listen to your doctors. So I'm getting out the bed. But I have no control on the left side. So I know in my head, in order to get past her, she right here, and get past the other one right here, and not hit the table behind them and the poles and all of that, I'm going to have to hurl myself because I ain't got no strength right here, and I can't do the lift thing. You know, I can't just get out over the guard because, remember, it's a bed rail up, too. So slowly while they talking, and look, I'm getting my leg up in the position to just hurl myself over this bed rail. So I do it. <laughs> I hurl myself over the bed rail. Because, man, you still, I told you, I have to use the bathroom. And nobody's hearing that because they're seeing this. And they're wondering, what happened to her? What happened to her? You know, she was good when we brought her in there. What happened to her? <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Was I good when they, I was asleep, you know? So... At this time, I heard myself up over, and they go, Miss Douglas, no, you know, but it's so fast, because I just kind of drop, you know, but I was able to see that this, this ain't working, you know what I'm saying? So, you can't come to me with no crap, because I don't try to stand up, and I can't. No, I try to catch myself. So, you know how when you jump over something, you try to catch yourself? Left side, I said, uh uh. We ain't doing that. Couldn't, you know, couldn't hold, couldn't stand. Just ankle just crumble, you know, just dragging it. And I know that because I tried to take a couple of steps quickly to get to the bathroom. And I couldn't, you know, I had to drag it. So, I'm dragging it, but I'm on the top of the foot. It just, instead of walking, so I can pick it up like that and walk on it, I try to move it, and it turns over the foot. So, I'm dragging the foot with the top part of my foot on the floor like this. Just the bottom part of my foot. So, my whole foot just done flipped over. And it's quick, so I step on it. And it hurts, so I almost break it. And then, that's when they put me in the bed. Put me back in the bed. Excuse me. And was going to try to tie me down. Don't do that to people like that. You make them panic more. Don't come and tie me down. Come and talk to me. Come and tell me what's up. Don't tie a person down against their will. If you can help that. I know in certain situations it calls for that. But if a person is coherent, and I was coherent, if a person is not trying to do you harm or themselves harm, and they just asking questions about themselves in a calmly matter, that's no reason to tie somebody up. You know? You talk to God, and you ask God to help you tell that person, help you deal with that person. But anyway. So... They I, talk about the time me up. I was like, ain't no reason for no restraints or nothing. You know, we good. I just want to, you know, I got to use the bathroom. So can one of y'all get me some bathroom? That's what I was trying to do. While y'all was figuring it out, I was just going to run the bathroom. So they got me to the bathroom or whatever. I did that. <sighs> so I go in the bathroom. Then I come out. Well, now it's all kind of doctors in there. Teams got a machines and that's when they started the process of trying to figure out what happened I had a stroke on the table obviously or between the table and going while I was laying there recovering or something but my heart checked out good they said you know and now I just had to start the long process of recovery learning to speak good without slurring and 
you know, I had to get special glasses. I had to get, you know, keep stepping down, you know, as my vision got better. What happened was my eye got out of line with the stroke. So something happened to the muscle. So it's not in the proper alignment. But it got better and better and better and better and better. Praise the Lord and better and better as time went on. And now it's just a little out of line, but I'm good with it. You know, the glass is correct, but you have to keep stepping yourself down, you know. So that's many, many glasses, you know. You buy this beautiful set, and then about three months later, you got to get another set because your vision is changing rapidly, but which is good because if it's changing for the better, that's good. So I didn't mind buying the glasses. I was good with that. Ooh, I get to get another one. I'm getting better. You know what I'm saying? So I used it for a motivator to keep myself going. But I tell you, it's physical therapy. It was physical therapy every day for like, I know, about eight, nine months. You know, I, I did. I started it there. But they had to come in and my mothers and everything. And because, you know, I'm like this. I don't have, and I have a patch on this eye because I couldn't walk or see right because I didn't know what was the real it. Like, if I try to walk, if I didn't have the patch on because it was so many different, like, if I'm going up the steps where I was, I would see five sets of steps. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't know which set of steps I'm looking at was the right steps. So you would fall. You would stumble. You would, you know how a person with a seeing eye cane do. You're trying to use the cane to figure out, is this the step or is this ain't, or is this not the step, you know? It's a life-changing event, let me tell you. And I had to wear a patch it's forever, seems like. But, and you can't do, it's hard to do lashes with the patch. You end up just scraping. So I didn't try to be vain, vain like that. <laughs> Try it, but. <laughs> I think I did it. I think I did it anyway. I, I didn't, you know, they didn't say I couldn't, you know. And I just kind of bowled my patch a little bit so it would stick out. <laughs> so my lashes. I know. <laughs> But at that point in time in my life, I needed something to, like, I needed to try to work on me again. It had been months, like, it had been like a year or something before I had got, went to the nail shop, before I could go to, you know, get somebody put, I, so when I'm putting nobody, getting no lashes put in, I had to learn how to do it myself, because I didn't want to go, you know, I couldn't drive myself, I didn't want to drive myself now. I could drive myself, hey, check me out. I could drive myself like that because when you close your eye, you still can see. But my thing was, if I know I'm like that, you know, and I know that I might have to have a knee-jerk response or something, I'm like this, you know, or I know I don't have the strength in it like I should, why well, get behind the wheel, you know? I do that. So I just access right it. Mind you, I'm still in another city. I'm not home. I ain't with my car anyway, but I had my brother's car, you know. He passed, so my mother gave me his car. Somebody take it, tried to take it from me, but that's a whole nother story. But So, I came home. I ended that part there because that was just me doing physical therapy at my mother's they coming in coming out telling me I'm good telling you telling me I'm not but mind you I had to drive you know as I got better this is the friend of my brother's friend was January I left my mother's March 16th the day before my brother's birthday that would have just been too much for me to bear I think and COVID hit and, excuse me, they were closing the airports everywhere and anchored. It's just like a city by itself, a state by itself, and they're not going to let you fly in and out of Anchorage like that. They were shutting everything down. You can't get back. You can't get there. And something inside told me, even though I was dragging still a little bit and the foot would turn over a little bit and I was just like this, I just would put my hand in my pocket 
you know, so people wouldn't, you know, see or make me, I wouldn't look like a prey or nothing. You could pray on me or nothing. And I got myself on a plane and I got myself home because I knew that I could take care of myself better at home. And with me being there, my mother, she's a mother. And even though she was grieving, she was still trying to take care of me. And we both hurting, and I'm dealing with the unknown, and she don't know what's happening to her daughter, and people trying to help us, people making a mess out of things, and just too much family, blah, 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 whatever. So I I, I knew that for my health and my safety and my well-being, and if I was going to ever get better, if I was going to ever be able to use my limbs again and think right and see right and talk right, and I was going to have to leave her. And I hated to do that because COVID hit and everything shut down and she was by herself in the house all the time. But I was too here. My son, I live, my son stays with me because, you know, I'm a disabled veteran. So, you know, he likes to be my caregiver, which is great. My son is not a child. He's an adult. Both of my sons are. But, you know, I just deal with it by myself. No spouse, no nothing. And that taught me a lot about my relationship. So, and all the things that I've been through, all the deaths, all the the stroke, the heart attack, the rehab, you know, trying to rehabilitate my body. I may have lost one thing, but I gained so much more. And the thing that I had to let go wasn't good for me anyway, because it was never there when I needed it to be there for me and although it had been a long time that you know I've been in that situation I just decided that I had had enough and that if I can do this by myself and I always have to do these things the treatments and everything by myself I never had the support like I should have you know, I just realized that I, I, I'm better than that, and I'm worth that, and I deserve that, and I just decided that this time around, I was going to, I was going to stay with God like I do, and I was going to see what God had for me, and I was going to give myself better, I was going to do what I had to do for me, I wasn't going to try to keep this together, keep, make this work, fix that, fix that, you know, it just wasn't there. And after 44 years, look like a person ought to be there for you. You know, nothing comes before a marriage. Nothing comes before your family. Nothing. So, I'm on a new journey. I, I came home. I did my rehab. I, I had to leave all the noise. And I did this constant rehab. Like, this chick was coming every day. Every day. I'm talking every day. And when you have a stroke and you weak on one side and you trying to make it, get it back and work it, you got a timeline. And if you don't hit it hard and get it then, you ain't going to get them limbs back. You're not going to get the use of that back. And I know that. So I had to work doubly hard, but I had to work hard, but I had to also work my, like my heart was hurting because I was doing it by myself. Nobody, you know, you know, my... I was hurting because I had lost my relatives, you know, and then it ended up being five, six, six relatives now. And these are all the people who raised me that's gone, the core of the family. And I was too sick to go to the funerals. I have one, lit, you know, I'm trying to do this by myself, you know, but none of them know that. And I haven't told them that yet. None of the family members know what I was going through. This is the first time anybody really know, you know, says my spouse and my children and my mother. But I came on back and I did the rehab of uh, the physical therapy. And my, I tried to go out at first. And that was, because I live in Alaska, it snows a lot, and it's snow, you know what I mean? It ain't just flurries, you know, this is inches, and sometimes feet. (laughs) So, (laughs) I said, hey, I ain't doing this like this, and I was not 
you know, it's dark all the time, and so it's, it's starting to get a little confined. I'm in the house all the time. I can't go nowhere. It's dark. I don't have nobody. Ain't nobody here with me because, you know, my children work, so they can't just sit down with my hands. So I'm by myself, and I just started to think about my life, and I wanted to make some changes in my life, and I did. So I went on and got myself better, and I kept focused, kept my focus. Even though I'm hurting, I'm crying every day and, and trying to, you know, get better. And when somebody pretends they don't know you sick, but they there with you when it happened, but then they pretend you good because they 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 don't they see you put on that happy face. It's not that you put on a happy face or you lying and telling nobody is. You gotta walk in that hill and you gotta act as though you are healed. That is faith. So I may not a cry, woe is me, or hey I need some help, but you should have knew that, you know. Couldn't hold a pencil, so couldn't hold a fork. So come on, I couldn't cook. Wasn't allowed to cook for myself. Wasn't allowed to do none of that. Couldn't do that. Scared I was gonna burn myself up. They said, don't do it. So I didn't, because you forget. You have a stroke, you had a stroke. That's a neurolog- neurological event. So you work on not only physical therapy, you have to work on speech therapy. You have to work on cognitive therapy, memory. It's not cut and dry. And, and this is a lifelong process. This is something you got to always do puzzles. You got to always try to keep it. You got to always, because of what happened to you. And I came on back. I did my thing. I got through it. And then I cut it down from once a week. It became every uh, every other day, you know, Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. Kept it going. Kept it going. Mind you, it's a whole nother year. Kept it going. I ain't seen nobody. I ain't seen my husband. I ain't seen no, no, nothing. Just no nothing. Just we ain't talking. We ain't nothing. Man, you had a stroke and a heart attack. Okay. So anyway, I just get through it all by myself. And then I get to the physical therapy. It becomes two days a week. You know, and I'm just pressing on, pressing on. Two days a week, two days a week. Then, time for a bone treatment. Because I'm working out. I'm doing a the physical therapy. Well, I'm starting to add workout with it. I'm starting to add weight with it because they said I could. And then I just start, you know, hitting it and, like, stumbling again. And, you know, just try to pick up something. Can't pick it up drop it, you know, hit my toe, it break, you know, it it heal, then hit my toe, it break again, you know, I think I broke one toe like three times, but, you know, that was because they said, you know, the bones or whatever from all the treatments is so quick, you know, any slight injury, and it was an old injury, so it keeps getting re-injured, injured. and so I dealt with that, so that was about six, a year and six months, <laughs> so finally, I get through treatments, I get through physical therapy, but the physical therapy, I couldn't go out anymore. They wouldn't let me go out. They start coming into my home. I couldn't drive, you know, with the toe issues and the stumbling and it's snow and it's ice and all that. They didn't want me to get out because, you know, they was like, hey, she's falling too much, you know. Well, she's hitting herself too much. So now I'm starting to look like a, you know, a problem because I'm getting hurt all the time. I'm falling and I'm trying to do it all by myself and I'm trying to cook for myself, but I'm forgetting that the stove is on. And, you know, I'm trying to be on my own and I'm forgetting that I left the door open. You know, stuff like that was happening to me, you know, during all that time, you know. But, you know, I'm saying come home. I'm saying help. I need help, whatever. But it's just, hey, I got a job and I can't, you know. And, and the thing is on that, I don't even need the money. That's the thing. I never needed the money from him. Never. But anyway. So, at this point, 
I'm realizing it's just neglect. It's just, hey, you, you're not coming back. You're lying. It's whatever, whatever. So I go see what's up for myself. You know, I drag myself down there, you know, whatever. Drag myself down there because I'm walking better. I'm looking better, you know. It's just all, all the way up. Now we all the way up to, uh, you know, I, okay, I had to get insurance started. I couldn't eat no more. I'm trying to work out, but I'm weak because I'm not eating. So I'm falling and I'm stumbling and I'm and I'm not. My gait ain't right no more. I'm, I'm going, you know. It's like I'm. It's like I'm going not going backwards, but some of the symptoms I have fought before, it's coming back. You know, I'm like, huh? I remember that feeling because I had that feeling at the first part. Why it's starting to feel like it don't want to move no more? You know, we 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 going back to this. You know, the vision is starting to be. <clears throat> Okay. Headaches is coming back. Oh my God. Oh. Huh? Oh, okay, I'm coming. Here I come. And I love wrestling. I'm a rush shout out to the W. What's up? Shout out AE. AE Dub. Shout out WWE. I just I like wrestling. You know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to watch wrestling, you know. It's an event pretty much every day, every night, whatever. But mainly Mondays, Raw, and Fridays and Wednesday, Rampage and Dynasty, whatever. I don't know if I can say all them names, but I did because I'm a fan. So I didn't mean to offend nobody. If I did, I'm sorry. Okay. But I love you all, and I think wrestlers are wonderful. My son is a wrestler, so I got a special little place for it. But anyway. So, I'm trying to, you know, still be, you know, back my, my life. I'm going to watch my wrestling, you know, trying to eat a little bit, you know. Me and my son is trying to do this thing. Well, you buy me something, I buy you something. That way we can figure out, we can get her something she wants to eat. Talking about me. And maybe she'll eat better because it's just me and my son, right? One of them is out of town. He's He was doing his thing at that time. So, me and my son developed. He's a wind turbine tick, so he's at school. But he's back now. But So, we developed this thing well. I eat out so it was uh, started to eat out a lot like that because like I said I couldn't cook for myself and I have a, a child here who's trying to work trying to be a productive citizen trying to do his thing and the mama side of me gonna kick in it don't matter if I'm flat on my back it's things gotta be done carpet's gotta be clean vacuuming bathroom I gotta get showered I gotta try to stand up in the shower I gotta try to sit in the chair so they bring me a chair put me in the shower teach me how to take a shower and all that whatever so we do that do that do that so I get better, I get better, I get better. But all this time, I'm needing help, right? And I'm I'm asking for help constantly, saying, hey, I know you got a job, blah, 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 but I just really need you home right now. Well, I'm not coming back. Five, four years in the midst of all this. So then I go down there and I see what's up, blah, blah, blah. And it's not what it's supposed to be. It ain't nothing prepared for me. You been down here all this time. You ain't did nothing but this. You know, blah, blah, blah. So it's just when somebody tell you they don't want you, don't be running after them. So, anywho, I come on back. And I try to get down again with the YouTube, whatever. Well, like I said, start going backwards. Start feeling, you know, just... What's going on, you know? All the stress of, excuse me, the marriage, the deaths, all that, you know. Just was coming back on me. Now it's the marriage. I'll be darned if I'm going to let that make me sick. Been there and done that too long. So, I go to see what's up. They tell me they don't want that, whatever. So, now that's where we are. We are here. And I thank you for being with me through all that. I thank you for watching my channel, for staying there, for not canceling your subscription. You just all stayed. So I lost some viewers. I lost some subscribers. But that's okay. I wasn't there. So I like to apologize and tell you my story and tell you why I was there. Your girl been going through it, okay? But that's the key word. <laughs> it's through, okay? So now, 
I'm starting life on my own by myself, doing my thing. And I appreciate your support. I appreciate you being there. Because I like some nail kits, you know what I mean? And look, I'm in the middle of doing, redoing them, so this is how far I got. But it's all good. It's all good. Because since the moment that I decided to believe in me and God and work with just me and God, I don't want to book. I don't you know, I had altered some things, and I have become some associates in some places that I was trying to be in all along, you know, and things have just looked up for me when I decided to bid on God and me, because God is not going to let his people get misused and abused, because when they cry out for help, he's going to help them. So... On that note, I thank y'all for sticking with me. And be looking out for some teachings. Because I learned a lot of things studying my Bible through all of this stuff. All of these trials and tribulations that your girl was in. So, you know, I can show you how I got through. You know, because you may be out there sick or something. You may be going through something. You may have had a heart attack. You may have had a stroke. You may be just going through a chronic illness. Hit me up. Let me know. I mean, just, I can, we can help each other, you know, by, you can, you heard my story. You see how you can ask me questions about my stroke or my heart attack, about my help, whatever, but I don't have help seeing anymore. But I went through that for almost 30 years of my life because there was not a cure for that. I was on part of the VA veterans were part of uh, that trial group that tried that drug, Suvas Buvir. That's the cure for Hep C. So I feel good because I was part of that team. And I was with uh, that doctor, a wonderful doctor, Dr. Gann. She's very wonderful. She's very smart. And she runs our program. And she uh, is works out of here and Washington and in many other states, Oregon. And she's just a specialist for those kind of liver diseases. And now it's more of a preventive maintenance thing with the liver. We just make sure that it's great and it's good. And I don't put a lot of foreign products in my body, you know, to keep myself straight and good. So once you change your lifestyle or once you know that you're dealing with something, you want to change yourself, you want to make yourself better. And because, hold on to God's hand, because all things are possible with God. It may look bleak, whatever. It may, And I know it feels bad. And I'm sure it hurts. And I'm sure that they're telling you. And when they're telling you, you have this, or, hey, L, it's looking like this, or, hey, L, you know, we tried that and that didn't work, so now we got to do this. It ain't stuff you want to hear. It's really not. But... You have to know in your heart that God is with you. And you have to hold on to your faith. And sometimes my faith wasn't enough. I, I was nervous, I was scared or whatever. So I, I just held on to, I, for one, I know fear is not from God. So if I got some fear, I got to get it out. However, I got to get it out. If I got to sing, I got to dance, I got to pray whatever I gotta get it out cause it's not allowed to live here cause it's not from God so see read your Bible so you know these things so you know how to fight so you know what to say when all that come upon you so you know how to be when it's looking bleak cause they told me in 99 I had 5 years to live that's bleak That's bleak to go home and tell your children, and they're small. So I know that I'm a miracle. I know that I should be treated and cherished and adored and loved because I could not be here. And for someone, for me to let someone just treat me like any old thing, I don't care how long I've been with you, I can't do that because I know what my value is in Christ Jesus. And because you don't value that, then bye.
So, don't let nobody or no one keep you beneath the level of prosperity that God has for you. Don't let nobody tell you who hasn't been there that they love you, because they don't. They just want what you have. Know that. You know, because action speaks louder than words. You can tell by their fruit. God's word says you can tell by their fruit who's for me. And that's that means how they treat you, what they do. Did they run out on you? Are they trying to help you? Are they liars? Are they cheats? Do they steal from you? Do they take from you? Do they slander your name? Do they talk about you? Are they not there to help you? Do they help you when they can? Or do they hold back? Do they give you all they have? Or do they hold back for themselves? You know, don't accept things that people try to do to you. If you are with somebody... You're supposed to be with that person if you're married to them. You don't get to go live in a home with someone else, another woman, another man. You have to be at home. That's what marriage is. And don't marry nobody because somebody told you to. Marry for love. Marry for the right reasons. Because then what you do is mess up that other person's life and you just with them because your father told you to marry them or your mother told you to marry them marry people for yourself marry the people that you love because it's not fair to that other person that you married that you didn't love and then you bring kids into that and then you can tell that that's the truth because the way you treat the kids the way you don't take care of the kids the way you don't talk to the kids it shows that you don't care and that all you was in it for was because somebody told you to marry them because they had a good job and they could take care of you so watch out you guys out there don't be gaslit by narcissists who always want to tell you they love you they do bare minimum but you're doing everything you better run so that's what more of my messages is going to be like but i would i'm still always going to be the, the nails and the hair but also i have amazon products to show you as well I am my Amazon associate as well now. So, we're going to be bringing you some products and showing you some things. But I've always brought you Amazon products and I always showed you Amazon thing because everything I have pretty much in my nail world and my setup. Hey, what y'all think about the new setup in a way? I'm not in my room no more. I'm in the living room. How about that? <laughs> How about that? I'm in the living room. But what you think? It was just, I have so many products and so much camera equipment and everything that I moved myself out of my own room. I couldn't even hardly get in there. I had a path just from the bed to the bathroom. You know what I mean? So don't let nobody keep you from where God is trying to take you. And ever remember, everybody can't go where God is taking you. And he will separate them from you. Stop trying to hold on to things that God has taken from you. If you left once, why'd you go back? Don't go back. So those are the things I, I want to teach you that what the Bible say about us. I want to teach you what the words say. I want to. I've always been a teacher of the word. I tell my children. I, I just always knew that that's where I should be. Where, I, where God want me. I always thought it was for marriages to keep them together, but I think it is to beware of false marriages. I think it's more that. But God will show me what I need. I'm not worried about that. God will show me what to do. Because when I open my mouth and tell you something about God, I want it to be God that's coming through. I don't want it to be me. So I want you to trust me on that when I tell you that if I tell you something, it's an epiphany, it's a revelation, it's something that, I have learned from the Lord, and I have researched on it. So I have made sure that it wasn't just my own mind saying those things. I have matched it against my word. And that way I can stand on it and know it's true. So read your word so you'll know who you are, first of all. But read your words so you'll know what you're supposed to have, who you're supposed to accept, 
if a person is not doing the same thing you're doing, don't be with them. They're never going to get to the level that you are because they are they don't have the drive you have for it. They don't have the, I want to learn my Bible like that -ness. They don't have that in them. They just want to say they did it. or So don't, and you can't make nobody be that. You just got to let them go. Let them be what they want to be. And you be what God made you. And everybody's happier that way. Nobody's trying to make nobody be nobody they don't want to be. So on that note, I'm going to let you go. I thank you for listening. I thank you for your time. And stay tuned for some fabulous kits and some wonderful products, okay? And remember, this is the day the Lord has made, so rejoice and be glad in it. I'll see you next time. Bye.